Network or on our Instagram. Hello. Welcome, high school students. That feels so funny to say. Um, I hope you're having a lovely day and I just wanted to say thank you for joining me on this Photography 101 class with Social Works, my friends um, over there. I love you all and I think this is going to be really fun. So let me introduce myself. My name is Elizabeth de la Piedra. I am a photographer based in Chicago as well. And um, if you are wondering maybe like why I sound the way that I do or if I have an accent, your ears are not deceiving you. I do indeed have an accent. I was born in Peru um, and then I moved from South America to Australia when I was two. I lived in Australia for basically ever until I moved to Chicago about 10 years ago. So Chicago is definitely my home now and it's important to the context of this conversation because it's where I got my start as a photographer. But preceding that, um, there's a lot of things that have come into play to kind of uh, basically make you understand why I am here in this space right now um, and it wasn't an easy journey um, per se not that anyone's journey is easy but there is some things that come into play when you are a creative and an artist that I just like to talk about or lightly touch on um, during this hour that we have together because I think it's important for like-minded people and creators um, to share these kind of things so that we can feel less alone, feel maybe inspired or kind of identify with something in that process. So I picked up my first camera in high school. I was probably around your guys' age and uh, I used it as a means to help me draw to scale. Um, I've always been really interested in art and the creative field. So since I was really, really young, like five or six, I was drawing and painting and, um, you know, always working on my scale in my classes. And then around the time I turned 12, 13 is when my family got uh, like an accessible camera that I could kind of understand and use. It was so basic that it was very point and shoot. And I found that really fun and really easy to use. This was really helpful because... I could take photos of the things that I wanted to draw and paint and then uh, use those photos to then reference um, in my images while I was drawing and painting to get the exact scale and, um, and train my eye in that way and train my whole sense of balance in the image. So from that on, I actually really took to photography and not in the sense of like, ooh, I want to be a photographer, but more the sense of curiosity. So, you know, curiosity, I think, is always such an amazing thing when you're young and you have a lot of energy. Like if you're curious about something and you can't be bothered, look into it. You might be untapping a resource for yourself that can engage you for hours and not in a sense of like you are even conscious of the fact that you are educating or training yourself particularly, but you know, you're just happy and involved and engaged and present and learning something new, which is always, I think, really uh, fun. And also for me tends to unlock other parts of my creativity. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> back to the camera and figuring stuff out. So I had this basic camera you know, the quality was terrible, but at the time, like, I didn't know anything about technical stuff, so what does it matter? Uh, I was taking photos, and then the internet had happened, so it was um, a big kind of massive moment of content creation in its first form for me, um, because I was then using the images I was creating to... Uh, basically put them online straight away because I was manipulating them in paint which was like the ancient version of Adobe Photoshop um and I was putting them online to to communities like live journalists stuff like that for for this is an old term so for people now for youngins I would say live journal at the time was just like 
a very prehistoric version of Tumblr. If that, there was definitely really cool communities of like fashion and stuff like that going on. But um, it was also really goth, which I was. Um, and anyways, so that is just a little bit of context about how I got into photography. I will just skip forward really fast to like why I didn't know then what I was doing was important because now like a very long time after that all started, you know, before I went into isolation, before we all went into isolation, my last photo shoot was for Gucci and Nike and Nordstrom. So that when I was taking silly photos and manipulating them and distorting them and, you know, collaging them and just making stuff for myself, I wasn't aware that that was the beginning of my journey and um, of training my eye and training to be a creative and an artist and being able to put my point of view across. So I think it's important just to say like, you know, picking up something, you never know what it's gonna lead to, but if you love it and you end up spending, like from me back in the day, just hours, I would just spend hours playing with my photos on Photoshop. I thought it was so fun, the possibilities were endless. And like, just like I said, like when you have the energy, do that stuff. And now that you guys have the time, I'm gonna um, have some resources here in this video and make links available for you guys um, and with social work so that you have these resources to look up and um, just reference for more practical and logistical kind of information. When I was uh, your age, the tutorials and stuff on YouTube were non-existent. So I think now is a great time for everyone who is interested and curious to, you know, if you want to do something, just look up how to do it. <laughs> it's really um, such an amazing, amazing tool that we all have now. And I could do that right now and do a, like a that kind of tutorial, but I think uh, Photography 101 for me means a lot of different things and not just the basics of photography like um, Aperture and ISO, which we will talk about because that is very important, your exposure, but um, context and journey and social media and your self-worth and all of these things come into play when you are a creative and an artist in society because you know we we're all striving and we're all hungry and it's really important just to remember a couple of things when we're on our journey to do all of that kind of stuff um so and a little bit more about my journey i started off really interested in uh, documentary photography and that was a main for me um but i also was really interested in fashion and more an editorial sense of portraiture so i started to do that and i think uh one thing that you need to focus on when you are starting photography that's really really important is learning about photographers that you like so in just like kind of pouring over imagery that you like, whether that's drawings and paintings, other photographers, uh, you know, Instagram's a really good resource if you wanna look through curated, um, you know, feeds like magazines or museums, the Art Institute, MoMA, all of those things, all of those places have great resources the International Center of Photography. All of these are great resources um, to constantly be training your eye. And you know, it's really important when you're looking at the imagery to understand why it's engaging you. Like what is it about the image that engages you? Because yes, it is true that everyone can take a photo, but a photo that means something to someone is and a photo that I feel like is successful a lot of the time too is because there is a universal truth in there somewhere that others can connect in in some small way or in some way. And that is the communication and that's the language, that's the visual language that makes photography so important. And that's why people say, you know, a photo is worth a thousand words because it truly is, you know, when you see someone's face, when they're surprised or shocked or, you know, like 
that split second and especially if you know someone or even if you don't you can see it in the news and stuff like that you you can see someone's face change it goes viral all the time and that kind of face change that kind of moment is what you're always kind of looking for as a photographer i guess that's like the best metaphor i can kind of say kind of put into that kind of information is like you are always looking for this like special moment and it can come in any different way shape or form and it can come in the form of light it can come in the form of movement and interaction and maybe it's something that you see every day so training your eye i think is one of the number one things that uh creatives and photographers and artists um do it's something that i trained a lot with school and um yeah that just meant pouring over all the master photographers so that means a lot of like uh older photographers like the master masters we're talking irving penn and um Halsman, uh sally mann uh just you know i could go on but i'll send out a list um check out the magnum photographers all of those guys helmut newton there are so many amazing fashion photographers too and you know i think the thing that happens when you start looking at all of the imagery is you start to break down what's so beautiful about the imagery and what's so where your eye is drawn and why you want to keep looking at it and those are the special things that you need to kind of break down in your head it's when you are making your own photographs and um so I did do, uh, you know, official training, I guess is the word. If you go to university and do photography school, I went to photography school for three years and um, that was great. It was very, very technical. I worked a lot in the studio. I worked a lot outside of the studio creating work. You know, when we're out of isolation, it's important that if you find like-minded people that you work together in teams because um when you start out you'll be doing a lot by yourself um and then so if you can find people to help you out whether it is be your assistant be your model be your stylist be um your producer you know like well you're going to be your own producer for a while but and maybe forever because at the end of the day it really starts and ends with your vision so you should be overseeing everything that is going on and i think the best training for that is doing your own shoots when i was in high school and when i was at first in school out of high school i was using my family a lot a lot a lot a lot um my little sister my big sister my mom my dad and then actually for my last year of university i documented my family across Australia, the United States and Peru. I was given a grant and I was able to use that money to travel and create the work. So I'll show you a little bit about it now because this is what I did in my last year of university when it was really important to kind of create a body of work to go into the world and showcase my point of view. And I think if your work is honestly your aesthetic and your point of view and it comes from a place that really means something to you, it will be powerful in a way that, you know, it is a conversation and it is starting a language. It is pointing, um, creating a conversation between you and some other people. And what I had found with my work was that when I created it, not a lot of people were actually documenting the faces of Peruvian women and you know it was something that I didn't even know would resonate with a lot of people but it did and telling the story of this family um you know some of us who are still in Peru some of us who migrated to Australia like I said when I was two I was very young my sister was eight you know, the, my cousin, my other cousins were 10, my other cousin was five. Like, it tells a story of this family across the globe kind of coming up together in different ways and then um, understanding that no matter how far away we are from one another, we're all, we're all the same. And we all share in a lot of, you know, not just how we look, which is very clear, 
that we're related, but we share these experiences as women, as family, as Peruvian people, as Latinx people, as immigrants, you know? So I think making your statement in the world from a true perspective is really, really important. And I think right now in isolation is, is could be something for you to consider. Um, you know, I think it's important that people see the perspective of high school students and the youth in isolation and the impact it's having on you guys and what you see every day, how that impacts you. And that can look any, any which way you want it to look. Um, so don't feel like you need to create anything in, in the, in the shape of anything else. It's really just like showcase, showcasing what you love maybe or what you hate. Um, and putting that in an image and seeing and playing around with how you like that. I would also like to talk about internships. Um, when I first moved to America, it was my big dream and goal to intern for photographers and agencies that are important to me growing up as a student of photography. Like I said, I had studied a lot of the, the masters of photography. So going to the source for me was an opportunity that I didn't have in Australia. So I thought that by moving to America, I could then um, go and seek out that opportunity and be surrounded by the people that inspire me. So I firstly did that in Chicago and found some really amazing photographers who taught me a lot about the industry. And actually, you know, when they couldn't do a job, they would give it to me. And at this point, I didn't even think I was that experienced, but they trusted me and I got even more experience in those jobs. You know, they teed me up for like, kind of like lower pressure jobs, but going out and helping people for free potentially when you are not that experienced is a wonderful way to get into the industry make connections and just gain so much knowledge and experience i promise you um you know it's just so invaluable being on set and being around good uh photographers they'll give you the greatest tips you've ever gotten um you know never get junk food for lunch because it makes everyone really lethargic after eating and no one wants to work anymore kind of stuff like that um but then also you have to be aware that uh some people will love the free help but not necessarily be there you know they might not inspire you in the way that you need to inspire you so i felt this way particularly when i on my first day at an internship uh the photographer had me clean the toilet and i really did not feel <laughs> inspired by that whole process i wasn't around any of uh, i wasn't around photo shoots and uh i felt that i wasn't learning a lot about photography or the photography field itself so please be aware that that does happen and uh you know if you think it's weird maybe talk about it with your friend a mentor your parent and or hit me up on instagram and be like is this weird um you know like are you learning stuff what's what's the what's the balance there because you know i do not mind cleaning a toilet a bathroom anything i'll clean the setup whatever you need but uh you better you know, be inspiring me and I should be learning stuff from you. I should be learning about the industry. I should be learning about your settings, your technique, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, just remember that your time is also very valuable and your energy is extremely valuable. You could be putting that energy into yourself and that's very important to know. So please be aware that, you know, you should be getting that um, education at the same time. So uh, I then wanted to level up. I went to New York and I was interning there for agencies and photographers. And that's where I gained a lot of experience for a year and a half. I became extremely inspired and then came back to Chicago to build on my own practice. This is one of the ways that you can get into photography. As a five foot six, 
kind of a slim built person. I am not the strongest person. I have tried very much to, to get stronger and stronger. Um, but you know, I was told for a long time that my biggest challenge would be to be a photographer because I wouldn't be able to assist people. And, uh, I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. You can be on set and try as hard as you can to assist, especially with the lifting and stuff like that. Uh, but it shouldn't make you feel like that you don't belong there. And imposter syndrome is something that I think I've had to deal a lot with because, you know, people might not take you seriously based on how you look for whatever preconceived judgmental notion that they have. And that is their issue. And it's taken me years and years and years to understand that. And I'm still kind of understanding that and to learn to be kind to myself, to learn to really believe in myself, but I do. And you, that's something that you just kind of need to repeat to yourself if you've had incidences or experiences with people, whether that's in school, lecturers or on set and people kind of like not believing in you. You have to believe in yourself because that will happen and they might, you know, but it's your vision at the end of the day. So just be aware and, you know, photography is a collaboration. Essentially, if you're working with a client, it's going to be a collaboration. If you're working with a model, you know, you might be on task to get something, but you are working with someone. So it is a collaboration to create the image and to create um, what you need to do. So keep that in mind. Respecting other people is the most important thing to me because I need, I want that as well uh, um, on my set. You know, when that is there among everyone and everyone's respecting each other, you make the best work. It's really fun. Um, everyone can do their job. And I'm just a very, very big believer of good energy on set. No bad energy on set. No bad energy allowed. Um, Okay, so we're going to go on to start talking about some of the technical language and breaking down some of the meanings so that you can understand your photos better and use your camera or whatever camera that you, I mean, on your phone or whatever camera, film or digital that you have to play with. Understanding these terms is important, especially in the long run if you're getting into photography because they affect the visual content, they affect everything. So I'm going to try and break it down as easy as possible. And I'm going to provide links uh, via social work so that you guys can run through this again in some really nice tutorials on YouTube that I found. Um, because like I said, you know, there's just so much really good shared screen, amazing tutorials out there that I think it's just better if I link them to you so that you can do it after this or on your own time or keep referring back to it. I'm talking like these are one minute videos. So uh, yeah, I think you can have a lot of fun with that and you find exactly what you want via that way. So quick definitions around photography. You're gonna hear words exposure, aperture and ISO. These things are really, really important. Exposure, basically it's an adjective in itself you're exposing your film in your camera to light coming through the hole in the camera, right? The hole within a lens that lets light in and the size of the hole is measured by f-stops. So that's about, I think it's 1.2, 1.4 and it goes up to f32. There's a really, really good diagram that I'm gonna make available for y'all to download and print or just have on your uh, computer, on your phone. This one right here. This is gonna explain a lot and I'm gonna break it down right now. So, uh, your f-stop is gonna affect the depth of field in your image, right? And depth of field means how much is in focus and how much is blurry. 
at the point I am now as a creator and image maker, I see depth of field in my head straight away. When I think of a photo, I'm like, I know what I want sharp. I know what I want soft. I know I want everything sharp. I know I want pretty much everything, but this like thing soft, like etc. soft, sharp, etc., etc., etc. And that it comes with training and comes with knowing what that looks like, uh, knowing your your creative decisions are there. And so it all comes into play while I'm making photos. But when I'm starting out, it's good to just explore, find things out, look at other images that play with these notions. And so I think the best way that we can showcase this kind of idea is by going through some images. <clears throat> so I just wanted to show you one of my images from last year. And this image was, I created in the studio and I used a small aperture. So when we're thinking small aperture, photography is a little confusing in this way, especially if you're bad with numbers like I am. Small aperture is a high f-stop number, okay? This one was shot, I believe, like f-16, maybe f-22 with lights using the studio. <clears throat> you're gonna, so, you're gonna get less light when you're using a big number like F16 or F22. You're gonna need, so if you're shooting for this particular image, right, super nice and sharp on F16. I had a lot of light blaring, flashes, etc., to capture this. Um, now, as you can see, it's a large depth of field, which means a sharp foreground and a sharp background so those are all like visual decisions aesthetic decisions i made prior to going into the shoot so the opposite of that would be a large aperture and these two photos are really good examples of large aperture so as you can see you know this might be shot f 2.2 um anything under four is going to give you Anything under F4 is going to give you kind of more of that shallower depth of field. So thinking of those terms again, shallow depth of field, which means only a small amount of the image is going to be sharp. This is a really, really important aesthetic tool when you're creating your images, okay? <clears throat> An easy way to remember that is just sharp, like a small amount of sharp and then a blurry, blurry background. And that's going to be a large aperture set at like 1.2, 2.4, 2.8, sort of things like that. Here's another uh, comparison of a shallow depth of field. See, his eyes are sharp thing. And then a large depth of field where you can see most of everything in the foreground is sharp and even. I mean, the velvet in the back isn't super sharp, but it's definitely, you know, sharper in general. Okay, uh, shutter speed. We need to talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is pretty much what it sounds like as well. It's how long the shutter is open. Shutter speed. Uh, so, I mean, the smaller the fraction, say one slash 250 uh that's gonna let a lesser amount of light in and then the larger the fraction say 130 allows more light in it's pretty much a rule of thumb that if you shoot damn i just saw something out of my window i really want to take a photo of it with my camera focus liz okay i gotta do this first oh wait no it's gone see the moment's gone you've always gotta be by the moment anyways um back to it so what did i just say so, la, 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 la. the larger the fraction <laughs> okay see i'm not good with numbers so the larger the fraction say 130 it's gonna allow more light in but it's a it's a rule of thumb i mean i wouldn't shoot 130th of a second without a tripod um without knowing that i'll probably get a blurry so if you're gonna shoot uh, slower than a 60th of a second, I'd say you need a tripod if you want it to be sharp. Yeah, so that's the rule of thumb with a shutter speed. 
So let's have some examples of slow and fast shutter speeds. I mean, it's very evident, like this one is a great example of a slow shutter speed. It's slow enough that it's captured the movement. You know, this is also like something that happened with your aperture and ISO together, but uh, the slower the shutter speed, the more light it's allowed and the more time it's allowed to capture this movement. So that's a really nice way to use shutter speed as a creative tool. And um, it's always best to understand things and try things out in the way, you know, like understanding shutter speed, getting it right, and then playing around, breaking the rules and getting cool stuff like this, in my opinion. So that was a slow shutter speed. This would be a sharp shutter speed. I mean, a fast shutter speed because we're not trying to get movement right. She's in the middle of the air, so that's wild. And she's moving like she is diving. Gravity is in full force right here. So they needed to be quick. Love that photo, Halsman. This is a really good book, Halsman at Work. Magnum Photographer, that's why I own it. Check him out. So those are basically shadow sweet. <laughs> okay, so ISO. This is an important term. Um, back in the film days, when this was all starting, ISO referred to the film speed. And so, for example, a slow film speed would be 100. And then a fast film speed would be 1,800. ISO at 100 is great to use um, in high level light conditions, right? sunny sunny days etc etc um and then as soon as you start to get uh into darker situations you're gonna have to up your iso you know for cloudy dusky days it's gonna be 400 um and then evening and indoor you know with no lights you know like band photography show photography that really cool stuff that you see they're not using flashes you can see that it's super atmospheric because of all like the cool color lights that are falling everywhere they're bump their isos up to you know really really high <laughs> 1600 13 3200 etc cetera, etc cetera, and the film stock goes up now it's different slightly to you know it's convertible essentially to a digital uh where instead of grain which is actually kind of an aesthetic now it was, well it always has been an aesthetic but it's it can be a choice of how you want your things to look grainy uh digital produces noise in the sensor so uh basically it's like um just kind of a little bit of that speckling that you see maybe in the shadows or something like that. Uh, a nice way to define ISO in digital photography is the measure of the camera's sensor capabilities and sensitivity, um, and that affects the grain of the noise of that image. Yeah, it works alongside the shutter speed and aperture, obviously, to expose your image to the way that you want it to look. Some things to remember about ISO is that a lower ISO is going to be used or best used in brighter situations to get the proper exposure. Um, it will mean little grain or noise um, than if you're using a higher ISO. ISO. Um, and it's going to let in less light because the sensor is less sensitive in your digital camera. High ISO, um, so we're talking like ISO 4000 or something like that, is going to mean it is more sensitive, like your sensor is more sensitive, so it's going to allow more light in. It means as well that used in low lighting situations, it's going to allow you to create those really nice atm atmospheric um images of say bands or wrappers or anything that have cool colored lights or smoke like that that you know when you're there and you're trying to get what your eye is seeing um you don't want to use a flash and blast everything out it's all about the atmosphere and the mood so that's what a lot of like say band photographers and when i was touring with uh edm djs uh, i would use this 
this tool. So really, really high ISO. Uh, it allows you as well, uh, if you're working in tandem with your f-stop and ISO, um, uh, f-stop and exposure to be aware of like what you want sharp and get that sharp because it can be very hard in low light situations. Um, yeah, and it will also mean that you have more grain or noise in your images. But again, um, depending on what kind of camera you use or if kind of film you use, that might not be something that bothers you or it can be literally something that you do on purpose to create the look that you're going for and create, you know, your own visual language. Some examples of how like an ISO looks is like, this one, the setting was a higher ISO because it was a dark room. Uh, you know, you can't really tell in the photo itself how dark it is because I was able to allow enough light in to see everything. But you can kind of understand the darkness with what's going on around the image. But, you know, I kept the key focus on the people in the portrait. And then another visual representation of this would be this photo of Yoko Ono. You can kind of see how grainy it is. I believe this is film. So, and you can kind of see how dark it is with all of the shadow in the image. Sorry about the reflection on this. It's not really helpful, but you can see there that they've used a grainy film to create this image and that it was it was kind of a low light situation because everything's dark and the only thing that are kind of being lit up are her skin uh her outfit and her hair are sucking in a lot of light which probably means it wasn't too much round love that picture um so those were high isos and this was a low iso like a hundred outside really bright so bright that she's backlit which means that the light is behind her and she's still lit up enough to make her out this is my sister this is my cousin <laughs> um so yeah so a couple more examples of how the iso affects the aesthetics of your image and your visual language really important to understand these. Uh, once you understand these practices, put them into play, then you can start kind of like breaking the rules or understand when you do make a mess up, like when you do mess up and you like it, you're like, how did I mess up? How did this look so cool? I love it, I love it, I love it. You know what you've done wrong. So then in an essence, you can do it wrong again, which means you're doing it your way, which means you're doing it right. This is my way of thinking. So yeah, play around with it because you never know what you can do with it or see. Your point of view is so important. Um, this, The images that I showed you of the women, of my cousins and and the people in my life. Uh, I Last year I had a talk at the St. Louis Art Museum to showcase them uh, on stage uh, to talk about my photography. Never in a million years did I think that I would be standing on the stage of a whole uh, art museum talking about my work like the week or month before and Kayande Wiley had been talking up there about his paintings. So you never know, you know, just believe in yourself so much and believe in your vision. Like if you are have a concept in your head that you're like, I just want to shoot it like no one else is really shooting it or this is what I see all the time and do other people see this because I'm not seeing it out there that's a void my friend that means that you are seeing something that is valuable and important that should be shared and that I mean it's up to you whether you want to share it or not but if you think that communicating will in a visual way will be good for your soul or potentially lead to a set of technical skills that you can apply in your later life as a career or as a hobby that brings you joy. I hope you do that uh, because I did and you know the journey is long and I think patience is very very important as a creative but it is worth it. I can't imagine doing anything else. Another tip uh, for photos 
for visual compositions is the rule of thirds. Sometimes I don't even aware that I, I'm pretty much never aware that I'm doing this, uh, but it's a running theme, I guess. And a lot of people talk about it in tutorials. So it's a good thing to kind of keep in mind if you're getting to know about photography and you're playing around with your composition because obviously composition is everything. Uh, rule of thirds. So in this image, square image, one, two, three. She's right here. Uh, I guess it's a proven fact that your eye doesn't necessarily tend to go directly to the middle of the image, but kind of around it. So it's a way of framing things that I feel is really aesthetically pleasing or kind of just creates a really good balance. Uh, here's another one of my images where I feel like it's up here of the third. There's also down here. Um, so it's kind of like, and this is almost symmetrical in like where it's half here of imagery and half there. But as you can see, you're kind of moving around the image. One more of a portrait that's using this. Sorry again about like the reflections on this. I'm just trying to protect these prints. Um, these... Uh, you can see she's in like the bottom third of the photo and sometimes I like to play with like different points of interest like the park image uh, poster right here. It is kind of like drawing you into the middle but it has like, I don't know, it's got a powerful way of uh, a composite thing so that you your eye is kind of like moving in and around and what's going on and what context this means. It kind of tells you a lot about the person. So this is my uh, my first project again, the one from school, the one that I talked about at the art museum. This is my sister, my cousins, my cousins. If you want to see this imagery um, in on your screens, uh, it'll be available. It's all available on my website, and I'll have that linked via social works as well, so you can kind of see more about my work, the kind of work that I do. Uh, I really like to be the person that allow kind of like works in the middle who uses their skills to tell honest narratives truth storytelling and uh, i think you can see that in the work that's on the website if you want to check it out so editing was a big part of my training in college and i was actually quite suspect about it because I was like oh you know I want it to be raw I want it to be real I want to see what I'm seeing all of that and that's fine I was doing that I was doing a lot of point and shoot photography on film cameras at the time so it was part of my aesthetic in fact let me prove it at so the same time I was shooting this like in Peru I was also shooting uh disposable so this is a shot of my disposables that I shot an undisposable at the same time I shot this. When I showed the work together, I showed the work together like uh, these photos and then my film photos step by side uh, because I felt that you kind of got a different sense and a different kind of feeling when you put the classically composed photos next to these point and shoot disposable camera photos. Um, and I felt that it was more of a family album feeling in this artistic context about a story. So yeah, back to editing. Uh, editing is just very, very important. I can't stress it enough. You have to be the one to be able to fix something if your client doesn't like how it looks, right? And that's just base level of what you're going to have to be able to do with Photoshop, um, Etc. I use Photoshop, so I'll be referring to that program for myself in this as one of as the program that you need. Uh, I use uh, Adobe Bridge to go through my files, select them. You know, I star them to then go over the visual edit again, and then I knock it down from there. It's just a way to be organized and to create a professional workflow. And time is money, so you really do need that workflow, right? So apart from like the basics in Photoshop that you're going to need to know if you want to kind of work in that more commercial space, you know, whether that is retouching hair, skin or a crease in, a, in clothing. I mean, if you have a, 
apps to edit yourself for Instagram right now, it's basically the same principles. So you're already learning it. Everything that you do on an app, you probably do on a Photoshop, but you know, you're doing it in a professional capacity. So those files are going to look different if you print them on a billboard. Um, but you know, that aside, retouching is a great gig it's, and you get paid a wonderful amount of money if you're good at it and get some big campaigns and stuff like that. So there are so many fields in photography, which we'll touch on in a second, but I just want to touch on again with editing that it can be used as a really awesome creative tool, not just for a uh, kind of like practical application. So I wanted to show you one of the works that I did for a magazine called The InMag. This is a Chicago run publication, um, female own created everything they do everything themselves uh it was a two woman operation now it is three but yeah so as you can see this is my photo of raven Lene, and i have photoshopped her sh shadow into creating like um you know like a playful fantasy surreal kind of moment okay so I really love this shoot. It's one of my favorite shoots. So let's go into it a little bit more. Here is my favorite from that shoot. This one. So, you know, when we're looking at an image like this, if I was going to break it down for you, I'd break it down like this. Okay. It's, um, it's lit up in a studio. So we've got a lot of lights going on. Um, I've got a team of people helping me helping me with the styling, helping me with the hair and makeup. My job for photography is to see how much, how sharp I want her. I want everything sharp for this beautiful girl. I want everyone to see what she's wearing. I want everyone to see that gorgeous face. And then I want to play around with the shadows um, and to create like just a narrative of who this artist is. She's playful, she's an angel. You know, she's a little bit naughty. It's just fun um, and showcase how creative she is also. So we did this. I created layers in Photoshop to create the shadows and put them into the backgrounds and stuff like that. So you do the photo shoot first and then I take my photos. I edit them to, to how I want them to look. In this case, I would be like coloring, adjusting or retouching anything. Um, getting that all perfect and then applying the little halo here and the wings here. And all of this is trial and error, you know. I came up with this idea and I just played around with it in Photoshop until I got the look that I wanted. It's, you know, there wasn't a, um, a tutorial on how to make that look necessarily. Um, but once you start learning your, your things, your tools of the trade, like Photoshop and stuff like that, you'll start to know and like just know off the top of your head how you can create these different effects. This one, I think I just pulled a picture of a wing. I made it black. I made it blurry. I changed the opacity. I popped it onto the image of Raven. I set it. I then transformed the shape to how big and small I wanted it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a process situation if I was to give it to you in a nutshell. One of my favorite images. Um, and so I also wanted to show you this photo because I think you can kind of see as well the same kind of process and not with the shadows, but some of the things that I've explained throughout this class is the f-stop, depth of field, and shutter speed. So what's sharp? Her eyes and her face. What's blurry? Everything else. So we have a shallow depth of field. And then I use Photoshop to create multiple layers of her. I blurred it, one of the layers, and I started playing around with color, opacity, and stuff and movement and then I just really you know went crazy because like I said once you know the tools in your toolbox you can play around with them and 
create new looks, break the rules, whatever you want. It's another one. I really wanted to get across like this painting vibe, this surreal softness, beauty. Create some interest. I applied the effect to her hair here. So whereas the other one, the everything but her face was blurry, I wanted everything sharp, but I wanted her hair kind of blurry in this one. I thought that was really cool. I love that picture. And then this one, sharp face, it starts to blur out around the edges. You know, using depth of field again as a tool to create your visual language. Show people how you see the world. Okay, so that to me is kind of like the essentials of photography, photography 101. Hello friends, you made it through that extremely long video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, thank you Social Works for having me. And if anyone that is watching this is able to do it, check out the donation link below because we're trying to give the Chicagoland kids an experience for the things that they're missing out on like prom, etc. So let's do that. Uh, I have some questions for you guys, from you guys after that. So let's go through them. Thanks for these questions, they're really good. This is an important one. Can Nikon share lenses with Canon? Absolutely not. Once you commit to a brand in like the digital space, uh, lenses specifically, that's your brand. I'm a Canon gal, so that's all my stuff. Answered. What is a prime lens? A prime lens is a lens that has one focal length, so it's not a zoom lens. Um, it, yeah, it's only one distance. They're more expensive. This is another question that people have than zoom lenses because like basically zoom lenses are going to be not as good as prime lenses because there's so much glass in there that it has the mechanics of it, you know, that has to deal with unless you start getting really, really, really crazy expensive like the stuff that the sports guys use and you'll get, you know, amazing zoom lenses. But that's basically the rule of thumb. When you're playing around and getting started, you know, start to play around, but it's not so expensive. I wouldn't go commit and spend up heaps of money on a lens. Um, it's like just too much. Um, how do I navigate presenting my photography as art itself, especially when in collaboration with brands and designers? I think um, my journey, like I was telling you guys in the video, uh, kind of helped me with this because my journey was so based on like getting my visual point across that now when brands and designers come to me they are are like hey Liz can you do what you do um, for us so that makes it uh, really kind of uh, helpful and good <laughs> uh, so that's what I say it's really important to make sure that you're getting your vision across and what you want to come across to the world because that really will resonate if it's true to you um where did i go to full to school for photography rmit in melbourne uh yeah it was a good one it was really tough it is a, is it important to learn how to shoot on film uh i think shooting on film is something that is really really helpful because you can tell a lot of the things like even just comparing your iphone photo to something that's shot on film and then looking at the settings and why it looks the same film and depending on what kind of film camera like i use this contacts t2 it's amazing, um, you know, that it, will, it becomes part of your aesthetic because every film camera has its look, basically. But you do learn a lot. I don't know if it's essential, but if you can, you should. Um, what else? What is a Magnum photographer? Oh, a Magnum photographer is uh, basically Magnum was started in like the early days I can't even tell you off the top of my head, but they were basically the beginners of photographer. They invented photography um, and then they created an agency of basically the first agency of photographers that were documenting the world and sharing it with the world so that we could see what was happening um, 
in different spaces, Europe, America, and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I, I uh, interned for them when I went to New York because it was really important for me to do that. So that is answered. How do you convert a PDF shareable file? Wait, I didn't answer that. I thought I answered something, I'm sorry, but I didn't. Okay, how can I how could I apply for a photography internship as a student? For me, what I do is when I'm interested in an internship, most photographers will have a link in their website, um, depending on how big they are. And same with agencies like Magnum. Other people, like other photographers that aren't big represented like that, you can literally just cold call email them. Uh, tell them what you're interested in, tell them what you like about their work, show them your work and see if they're into that because a mentoring kind of relationship is so good. If you find someone in Chicago that you liked their work and you want to know how they shoot, um, hit them up. Um, um, um. When is it okay to use autofocus? My eyes are so bad. So I use autofocus all the time. I just do. I gave up on manual focus a long time ago. I don't trust my eyes. So yep, that's that on that. Um, where, who were some of the photographers that inspired you the most when you were getting into the art form? Um, back in the day, I really liked Hiro Mix. She was a Japanese photographer that was doing a lot of point and shoot stuff. I thought that was really cool. And she was kind of like breaking her own rules and doing all that stuff. Like a little bit Terry Richardson S, but a girl. So. I was relating to that way more. Um, Bill Henson in Australia is one of the most amazing art photographers, fine art photographers. And like I said, just pouring over old photo books, um, Henry Cartier-Bresson, Irving Penn, those guys are amazing. Um, oh, this is a good one. What skills did you learn shooting concerts that uh, you're not at a party, you're at your job. Um, I see, sometimes I see people that are working and you know, you, you do your own thing and it can be part of your brand and stuff like that. But like for me, I had to really make it not like hanging out with my friends. I'm at my work and then also everything moves so, so fast. So make sure you're always on your fingers on the trigger, like trigger finger, baby. <laughs> I don't know if that's okay, but like camera button operate um so yeah i'm sorry um how or how could i get a grant as a student for, for photography projects or documentary series this is from cosmic kevs you should be looking at all like photo run uh instagram and sites like that because a lot of people will offer um, things for students and young up and coming photographers. Um, so yeah, I would say like Photo Society, National Geographic, uh, look into Google. And honestly, right now your age will be um, really useful to you as you're kind of navigating your journey um, in the photo space. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. Someone asked us about the last photo I shared. Is that more editing versus the actual shot? That's a really great question. Let's highlight that. Uh, that one was a cupcake. You know, it's hard to say that what's what. I'd say in that one it's 50-50 because unless you're getting the, that raw shot in camera and in capture, it's, good. it's really hard to, to convert something that, you're not seeing looking great in your camera into something really, really great in Photoshop. It can be done. It can be done, but the best practice is always to make sure your shot is as close to what you want in the frame. And now because I'm using editing as such a visual effect, that is like, oh, it's almost like painting on your photos. You're using that as a another way to make art. It's not necessarily just like, um, Photo, strict photo per se. Um, how many megapixels do you really need in a camera? When I started, they were only making like two megapixel 
camera. So um, the one that I use now has 20 or 21 megapixels that I use professionally, but I'm thinking of going out, not that you guys even need to worry about that stuff right now, but like, you know, it just depends how big you're printing, to be honest. So yeah, I don't, I mean, 20, I guess. <laughs> and then... Um, how are we doing for time? I'm going to check in. I think. Cool. Um, and then I just wanted to say a couple more things. Just, um, I know there's a couple more questions up here, but I really want to just say like, just be sure to know that your path is your own path and to have patience with your path and that everything that's really worth anything in the world takes time. Um, so you will get there and, you know, we all come from different places and spaces and stuff like that. So if anyone tells you that there's a certain way to get where you want to go, um, just, you know, just keep in mind that that is not necessarily always the case. I just like to say thank you to the people who are saying thanks to me on the questions thing right now. Um, that is very nice of you. I would love to spend more time with you guys, honestly. So thanks for giving me your Tuesday as well. Um, this, you know, it's a new thing for me to start talking for kids and in an educational sense. So thanks for being patient with me and, um, for taking this journey with me too. Yeah. Please don't forget to donate if you can and then also want to give you another resource that I don't think that I have uh, sent over to social works which is Latitude Chicago the Instagram is Latitude Shy please check them out they're an amazing learning resource they have incredible internships really good classes and workshops I go there all the time it's a photographer basically run community it's a non-for-profit also um, it's really important to creatives in Chicago so I would definitely say use this as a resource they're always looking for people to come in and help or like teach super invaluable and i'm a, i'm sad that everyone's closed right now but i'm excited for when that's open again because it's just such a good resources for for people in chicago especially if you don't go you to go to university for a photo um you know that's basically where you're going to be getting all of your equipment to use while you're trying to learn and up your your skill level um so it's the first time i've ever seen anywhere in the world have like a fully run, uh, photo printing, s scanning thing going on and it's not at a school. That's really cool. And you can take classes, there's tutorials there. I literally just did one. I was printing a big art print and I did a class on how to print a big art print. Well, not a class, she just sat with me, showed me and now when I go in there, I have a little printout and I can do it myself. Um, I feel like we're running over over time. Let me check. Okay. <laughs> um, so I guess that's it. Thank you again, everyone for hanging out with me and checking out the video. Um, I hope it you gained something, anything from it. And I know that I gained a lot from being here and sharing stuff with you. Sometimes trying new things can be scary, but then you do them and then they're done. So go out, take photos. If you want to show me your photos, please at me um, on Instagram, Elizabeth de la Piedra. I would love to see them. And if you have any questions about your photos or about other things, that's my aunt. So don't hesitate. Love you, social works. Anyone who can donate, please donate. Give these kids what they deserve. Thank you. Yeah, bro. North side, that's the way. Uh, ready to get out, here we come. Uh, S work, keep the energy. Look, yeah, we never unplug. Uh, S work, show some love. Yeah. Social works, social works, social works, social.
social works 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 yeah yeah s works s works everyone put in their hands you know it's a vibe they're waiting in line to get up and float up the stands yeah we in this together we feeling like fam it's all about peace so pull up with friends you better come through with you and your crew cause everybody going in s works so we keep it lit you can see how we move the city from the west side to the east Ooh, you can feel it how we leave through it's all about the youth the world through the tunes, uh, make the world to a better place, and S works what we do. Social works, work, 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 social works. Social works, keep my family out the dirt. This organization, we stopping no Satan and open my we call it works. Action on a tailor, the killer verse. I do on my phone, my city hurt. They killing my babies, this world going crazy. I pray for my city to reimburse. Run the schools for the kiddies. Where the city at with Liddy? All I know is this world. With the heart, keep it busy. Know the life, keep it tricky. But please just let me finish. Let me just be a witness. S works, handle bitch. Social works. Social works. Social works. Social works. Social Ready or not, here we come. South side, west side, east side, north side. Up on the run, we ain't for the none. We came in the party, we here for the fun. Celebrate life, the party we young. Tell you the limit, we looking above. We up in the sun. No matter what, we stay on the run. Ha, ass work, do your thing. Ass work, keep it lit. Uh, Bulls out, keep your aim. Yeah, yeah, we up on the jab. Uh, north side, that's the way. Uh, ready or not, here we come. Uh, ass work, keep the energy. Look, yeah, we never unplug. Uh, ass work, show some love. Yeah. Social works. Social works, social works, social, social works, social works, social works. Works what we do. Social works work. Social work. 